Hello there my fellow Holotable heroes and welcome to another Swaga video. So I just made it to the end of Sector 4 in hard difficulties in the conquest and here in this video I want to show you two battles uh, where I completed all the free feats versus Ray uh, using Vader so no Galactic le Legends required here. Uh, also for the Termite removal feat probably if you do have Riley Gideon he's a good character there to use. But I know that you know not everybody there will have Gideon, so I tried to make it work without Gideon as well. But anyway, let's look at the feats now. Um, so we've got the hindered movement. Now this one uh, is a bit uh, challenging uh, because uh, you know when Ray takes a turn, every time she takes a turn, she will get inspired on one of her allies. And as long as Ray is alive, you won't be able to remove Termiter from inspired allies. So what Ray will do, she will take very two quick turns, she's got very high speed here uh, in the conquest and you know she will put first inspired on herself and then on another ally. So at the beginning of the battle already you only have three targets uh, that you can use um, turn meter remove one on and then as well if Finn gets going um, and Poe get going suddenly everybody have um, inspired if they get to use the special abilities. So that's why you can use their Vader, get a quick turn and start applying ability blocks so then the other guys can't start uh, spreading uh, the Inspired. Now obviously you can't remove Inspired so every time you critically hit them they will lose one stack and they obviously start with three stacks of Inspired. However, because Ray will put critical damage immunity on them in the beginning, again, you won't be able to straight away critically hit them and get rid of those uh, uh, stacks of Inspired. So there is definitely a bit of trickery here uh, to get a turn remo removal feed done it can be done it just takes a long time you got to be patient with this one so it's going to be a long battle and again we do not have counter uh, for this turn meter removal so you have no way of knowing did you already remove 700% turn meter or not so i just literally run down the clock to the last minute and hoping i removed enough turn meter and i actually did so this is probably a tricky feed here to complete um, attacking out of turn at least 30 times, I didn't find this particularly, particularly challenging, it was, you know, straightforward, I didn't even have to think about it too much, uh, because obviously we will be using Watsambor in there, and then anytime uh, an ally that's got tech on them, use a special ability, uh, Watsambor gets the call to assist, so there you go, that, that's your assists out of turn, so you do not need to worry about that. And also the unsupportive one, now this one could be as well tricky because all the non-galactic legend counters we use versus Ray, they either use like Throne or Watt, uh, Bastila, you know, all the support key support characters here. Or if you would use Jedi again, you would use Hermit Yoda in there, you would use uh, Shakti or uh, Bastila. So these guys are all support units. So trying to find a counter here that can beat Ray without using support characters you know, it is a little bit challenging, but I was able to make it work, which I'll show you in the second battle. So in the first one, I will be showing you the hinder movement and opportunistic advance uh, feats. And then in the second battle, uh, we'll defeat Ray with Vader again without using any support units. Looking at the modifiers for the enemy here, wait for it. <laughs> uh, so the boss will get 100% uh, counter chance, 100% tenacity and 100% critical chance and defense. So Ray will start very tanky, she will counter attack every time, she will start with high tenacity. So, you know, she will be a little bit juiced up here to begin with. Uh, however, whenever you defeat one of her allies, then suddenly Rain will start getting some debuffs on her. Um, so, you know, she will get less and less um, tanky, less and less uh, challenging to defeat. Uh, however, mind you, you you would want to take her out early in the battle because if you leave her to the last, you have nobody to remove turn meter from. So you should be looking at taking her out as quickly as you can, so then you can start removing turn meter from allies uh, that do have inspired. Okay, so before I go uh, into the battle and show you the team and mods and everything that I used to complete all the feats here, let me first show you the discs for the first battle. So this first battle, uh, because obviously you don't want to kill these guys too quickly, I removed any sort of extra offense there uh, <laughs> from my guys and I just add them all the protection up, extra health, extra protection discs, some evasion there, uh, as well as uh, turn meter removal, just to try to you know make my guys as tanky as possible while they don't hit as hard because we want these guys to be able to survive so we can keep removing turn meter from them. And that's why I went for this kind of uh, disc here configuration 
which whatever I had for extra health, extra protection, and then in any sort of DK turn meter discs you can have, you know, just to get some extra turn meter removal there to help us achieve the target of 700% turn meter removal. And finally, I did add the potency disc as well, because remember, uh, Ray there will be starting with very high tenacity, and we do want to stick lots of dots on her if we can. Now this is the team that I'll be using here in the first battle. Now initially I was trying to get this turn meter removal fit with Vader lead because also you get extra turn meter removal uh, with Vader in there. However, because with uh, Zeta on his leadership, you know, all those dots that you are applying will not expire and eventually those dots will stack up so high that they will just defeat all the enemies. So I decided to go with Thrones leadership because his leadership obviously gives to Empire allies though that extra ability uh, that they can just use to kind of cleanse buffs of themselves and also gain uh, turn meter uh, and every, that is a special ability so every time you do that you'll get what we call to assist remove some turn meter attack out of turn and as well apply extra dots so you can use those abilities to kind of uh, keep calling uh, what on board there uh, to assist applying extra dots so throne leadership there is very good as well as it will allow us to hold his fracture longer because we have an extra special ability that Vader can use. Okay, so let's look at the mods now. Uh, I didn't remote for this uh, battle here. These are just the mods I have on these guys all the time. So obviously Throne, I do have him modded for speed. So he's at 306. Uh, then up next, we got Vader here, um, at Relic 7. He's got some speed on him, but mainly, you know, focus on potency, critical chance, offense. It's how you know you really want your Vader to be modded to counter Galactic Legends. Then up next, got Brute Alpha here. Um, mine's actually modded for tenacity and some speed. And it's also worth pointing out here that the AoE from uh, Geo Brute here can also remove turn meter. So we've got some extra turn meter removal here as well. And then what Tambor obviously will use him for tech uh, to dish out. And you know, you do want to have him fast, so mine's at 307. Then up next, now the fifth character here, probably it's flexible what you use. I just thought to bring in Trey, just in case we need to isolate uh, Ray Jedi training if she would be getting too much in the way with her taunting and things like that. So I thought maybe that's a good way. And also, if Vader gets any debuffs on him, you know, when he gets a turn, uh, Trey as unique will dispel those debuffs. So I thought, you know, Trey is a good complementary piece, as well as her basic and apply days, you know, so maybe we can stop their counterattacks. And also her Saber Storm there can apply Tenacity down, uh, so we can land more uh, debuffs uh, on Ray and as well as ability blocks, hopefully we can stop Ray from using Whirlwind. So, you know, Trey is kind of a good character I think to have in here, and I have her mother for speed, so she's at 271. Okay, uh, I mean, you know, if you ever use Vader versus Ray, you know how this goes, it's a pretty standard thing, you put weapon tech over on Vader, then Ray takes a bunch of turns and... Because of weapon tech, Vader got extra bonus turn meter, so he can now go ahead and start doing what Vader does. So let's enter Merciless here. So there you go, uh, what they're calling to assist, removing turn meter. And here again we target Poe, what calls assist, removes turn meter. And we just go around here, doing basic attacks. And now Ray Jedi training, she has a chance to dispel any debuffs you put on her. Just something to bear in mind. And uh, now here on BB-8, there we go, he dodged, that's okay. No ability block, unfortunately, on Ray. And Merciless is gone with Vader. So now here again, you, when, whenever you special abilities, target enemies that do not have Inspired on them, so you can actually remove turn meter when what is called to assist. Now we can apply Fracture on Ray, put her on timeout, so, you know, she won't disturb us then tank tech i put there over on geo brood just that he, just that we can keep taunt on him and then here uh with um trey i actually you, i was thinking he should isolate somebody but i'm like no let's just get that tenacity down on ray so we can actually uh, land those debuffs more reliably on her did the aoe there with uh, geo brood hopefully remove some turn meter remove buffs on enemies there we go, just basic there, trying to land ability block on Finn. We are ready for another round of Merciless, again targeting. Whenever you special abilities there, make sure to target somebody that does not have Inspired. So when Walt is called to assist, he removes turn meter. Okay, there we go. Now <laughs> we've got Foresight there on BB-8 and Ray most of the time, so they'll be dodging a lot. Uh, but that's okay, we'll deal with them in the end. Right now I'm just trying to get Ray out of here first 
Um, so we can then start removing term meter from everybody. Now here, see, for example, I could use the special ability from Thrones leadership. Okay. So we can now also remove term meter from Ray. She doesn't have any stacks of Inspired anymore. So the only one now that we can't remove term meter from is BB-8. All right, so I decided here, let's just isolate Ray, put an extra debuff on her. Let's cleanse off our tank there. All right, there we go. We are ready here for another another force crush. Uh, so let's go ahead target Finn. Again, removing term meter there with what? Okay. Ray is out of fracture, so let's swap term meter now here with Vader. And try to get Ray out, obviously, before she gets into her ultimate or something. So that's why here I could use special abilities that you do get from Thrones leadership because it gave now my Vader another quick turn so he can get to his Merciless again uh, before Rey gets into her ultimate. So hopefully we'll be able to get more dots on her and that should be then enough to take her out. All right, let's do Force Crush over there. And now let's get ready for a big hit. Hopefully this is enough. Boom, there we go. There goes Rey. So now we can remove term meter from everybody here. But obviously Finn there, he's got a lot of stacks of damage over times on him already. So I don't think he'll last long. We'll see. Okay, let's dispel their um, debuffs on our tank. All right. So, you know, there's no no danger of us losing this battle anymore. We can remove term meter from everybody now. However... Um, obviously, you know, you do want to take your time making sure you do not take these guys out too quickly because again, without that term meter counter here that we have, you have no idea how much term meter you, you removed so far. Okay, there we go. So here, that's where it comes handy. Uh, obviously, I put the last piece of tech over on Throne. So now whenever he uses a, spe a special ability, uh, what will come to an assist and there we go. Keep removing term meter. Do another AoE here, remove more turn meter. So that's what you really want to do here. You want to try to minimize the damage you do to these guys by using special abilities there uh, with whoever has got tech on them um, that don't do much damage. Then what can call to come to an assist, keep removing turn meter. And as well, um, you know, anybody that do a hit, they also remove turn meter because I do have one turn meter removal disc equipped. Uh, so, you know. 15 by 15 percent, uh, 8 by 8 percent term meter removal. We are getting there slowly. Now Finn there is almost out of here. So I'm just uh, hitting here Ray now and uh, BB-8. Uh, because you see BB-8 every time he evades he will be recovering uh, health and protection. So excellent here Finn came in <laughs> with his AoE healing everybody up a little bit because of... Uh, BB-80 support unit so they got some health and protection back and that's what I actually wanted but I'm like you know what let's get Finn out of here he's making a mess now ref out of this battle and now I'll just focus on the remaining guys and there you go luckily because both uh, Rage Jedi training and BB-8 they'll keep regaining foresight you will be able to prolong this battle here uh, all the way to the end and keep removing the turn meter so they go swapping turn meter we can again hopefully uh, remove center meter from them. Let BB-8 keep heal up. There we go. Use ability from throne as leadership. Remove uh, turn meter from BB-8 there. All right. Now we do want this uh, three star win if ideal. That's why here um, they took out uh, Geo Brute, but because he separatist, what there was able to revive him and bring him back. There we go, let's do another AoE, hopefully remove some turn meter. And obviously Rage Jedi training, she will be getting lots of extra uh, bonus turn meter. Man, they keep going, <laughs> keep going after my brute. Um, he's almost gone. All right, so let's go ahead, swap turn meter, but unfortunately he's got healing immunity on him. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll see if they'll take him, if they will take him out yet again. There we go. So as you can see, you know, getting these attacks out of turn thanks to um, what is not a problem. Here I just decided to isolate finally Ray because she kept getting so much bonus turn meter and keep taking out my Geo Brute. So just hopefully with isolate on her, you know, we'll slow her down a bit. And there we go. Just keep using special abilities here. Just basics from Vader here. I do not want to apply more dots. I don't want to 
uh, you know, going to Merciless and take these guys out too quickly. So just kind of basics here and any sort of special abilities that don't do much damage here. Uh, and so keep just hitting there. Whenever the other guys are too low on health and protection, just keep hitting BB-8 uh, because he will regain foresight and when he evades, um, then he will recover health and protection. All right, so let's go into Merciless here. There we go. Let BB-8 dodge, that's okay. And I don't want to hit Ray and kill her, so I just use their uh, ability from Front's leadership. Heading over onto BB-8 yet again. All right, time to bring back Geo Brute again with Watt. Uh, hopefully he can stay alive this time, so we can get back stars. So we have only two minutes on the clock now. All right, trying here not to take anybody out, so we can keep removing Termiter. Now, if you would have Moff Gideon here, obviously, uh, you know, Termiter removal. Uh, probably would be quicker to achieve um, because his termiter removal removes termiter from everybody uh, and most importantly you know it doesn't really do any damage to them so but i wanted to show you that you do not need gideon in order for this to work but if you do have gideon you could probably use him instead of treya there because even as treya didn't really do much i think in this battle uh, in my other account i used gideon instead of treya and it worked really well uh, but again, I want to show you do not need Relic Gideon because he's a relatively new character, so maybe not everybody have him. So definitely this fifth slot where I use Trey in here, I think it's quite flexible um, what you can use. But the core four are obviously Throne Lead, Vader, Watt, and then, you know, it's good to have Geo Brute in there um, so that you have a tank that you can keep resummoning. Uh, and then as well, when Geo uh, Brute himself got taken out, I was able to revive him with Watt because he's a Separatist. And his AoE as well can remove Termiter also, so I think this 4 is kind of the core and then the 5th one you can play around, see what you've got in your roster that can, you know, help you uh, with either removing Termiter or surviving this battle longer. So there you go, we're down to 50 seconds, just keeping everybody alive now. Uh, however, we do have to win the battle, so eventually <laughs> we will have to finish this uh, before the battle gets out of hand. That's so why here I enter Merciless, decided to finish off these guys. All right, finish off him. I'll do one more last Termiter removal, maybe. <laughs> there we go. And take out Ray, and that's it. So thank you for bearing uh, with me through this 10-minute battle. But again, without any sort of uh, progress there for the feats, uh, we have no idea how much Termiter we removed so far. Uh, so I decided to run down the clock all the way down, hoping it was enough. And yes, yes it was, so there we go. We completed the hindered movement feat as well as the opportunistic advanced feat. Which means we have only one more feat to go where you have to win without using any support units. So let me now show you uh, what kind of discs and team I used to complete the last remaining feat here in Sector 4 versus Ray. Now for the second battle I actually flipped my discs around whereas in the first one it was all about surviving, not about doing big massive damage. In this one it's opposite, you have to do big massive damage because you don't want to give Rey a chance to whirlwind somebody also her ultimate can be quite deadly so you really really want to get max offense on your Vader uh, so then he can go ahead and take Rey out before it's too late so I swapped my discs around uh, I, le I did leave the en entrenched one you know just get a little bit of extra protection up on your guys that they can survive that initial wave of attacks Leader Resolve is as well very crucial here, I think, uh, because this time we'll be using Vader in the leading slot. So you know, any sort of boost to Vader we can get will be helpful. Again, still having potency there, a little bit extra potency. And then here, this is where all the buffs here change. So instead of extra health and protection, removing Termiter, it's all about stacking offense and getting as many buffs as you can. So I've got a stacking offense one, I've got offense, offensive buffs, I've got heal over times and defensive buffs. So you can see anytime uh, Vader will get a turn or anybody else really, he will be getting 6 buffs, which means 30% uh, offense. And for his all those bonus turns in Merciless, you know, by the time he comes out of Merciless, he will have very high offense already. So you really need to kind of be able to survive here until he gets to his second Merciless, because at that point he will have probably enough offense that he can just one-shot Ray. Okay, so this is a team I'll be taking, so remember we are not allowed to use support characters here, so I decided obviously Vader lead, you know, so that they can't cleanse those uh, dots when we apply it on them. And then uh, Darth Revan, so you know, he can put fear on everybody, 
uh, so then they can't you know take us out too quickly and then Malak there as well uh, with his fear and taunting and things like that he can a little bit slow down that initial wave of attacks especially from uh, both resistance heroes and then I just decided to put two extra tanks in there just that you know we have somebody maybe that can take a whirlwind or two and then sign there he can dispel uh, buffs on them as well so you know hopefully this will be enough here surrounding Vader with Revan and three tanks. Uh, let me just show you mods quickly as shown before. Obviously Vader here modded for some speed, damage, potency, critical chance. Uh, my Darth Revan here is a Trellic 4. Again I didn't remod. These are just the mods I have on these guys at all times. So he's modded mainly for speed at 326. Up next got Malak here, Trellic 4. Mix of speed and tenacity on him. And then we've got here Sith Empire Trooper. He doesn't really need doesn't really need anything apart from you know defense protection and things like that. And then Sion here uh, modded mainly for speed. All right, so let's hope Vader now with all these extra buffs and stacking offense whenever he gains buff will be enough um, to carry us through. And that's why here it's good to have obviously a pre-taunting tank and Malak because then they kind of keep under control uh, all these attacks away from Vader so he doesn't get targeted and there we go uh, let's now um, to the AoE so there you go I landed their shock on Ray Jedi training so she won't be able to gain bonus term meter so that's pretty useful here and there we go do a force crash uh, just decided there to call Ray Jedi training out of there before she causes too much trouble again uh, you know with healing immunity ability blocks and things like that just get her out and mind you because we took out one of allies from Rey, as you can see now, Rey suddenly has uh, 10 armor shreds on her. So she, we will be able to one-shot her whenever we do get to another round of Merciless. So just something to bear in mind. Just take out Rey Jedi training first, because this will then obviously totally cripple defense on Rey. So there we go, we took her out before she even got into her ultimate, uh, because uh, of this modifier that she started with. When you do take out her first ally, she will get 10 stacks of armor shred, so her defense suddenly plummeted. So in this case, we didn't need to watch weapon tech there with Vader so that we were able to knock her out straight away. And from here on out, it's just a clean cleanup job. I thought this battle would be a lot messier when I was going into it, and I was actually surprised how quick, clean and easy it was here to win. There we go. So one, one resistance hero gone, and another one, boom, there we go. So finish them off in less than two minutes. <laughs> no issues or complications whatsoever. I was a little bit worried how it will go, but you know, in the end, it ended up well. Uh, for some reason, my recording there skipped. But anyway, there you go. Got the feat with unsupportive, where you have to win without using any support units in your squad. So definitely, Vader here probably is the key here to get all the free feats done versus Ray if you do not have any Galactic Legends. Uh, now the turn meter removal feat probably is slightly trickier to achieve um, but you know as long as you take your time um, you should be good to go there especially if you do have Moff Gideon that you can use. Well, I thought that also this one without support units will be challenging but obviously with moving my discs around putting so much offense there through buffs uh, on Vader just proved enough that we were able to instantly take out Ray Jedi training which applied armor shreds over on Ray. So we could then also just call her as well before she even got to her ultimate. So there you go guys, no need for Galactic Legends yet again here in Sector 4. I hope you find this video useful and helpful, showing you how you can do this. Obviously I'll see you in the Sector 5 video, we'll see how that one will go versus Kylo. But until then have fun, enjoy life and may the RNG be with you my friends.